Hello YouTube friends, Dr. Teresa here. Recently someone asked me if I used live plants or macroalgae in my dwarf seahorse tank and I definitely do not. If you've looked at any of my previous videos you will see that the bottom of my dwarf seahorse tank is bare. I purposely do not get live plants or macroalgae even though some argue it makes the tank look more natural because of several reasons. Foremost, anytime you bring in something into your aquarium that has contact with other seawater, you risk the chance of introducing invisible hitchhikers. And the ones that I'm thinking of in particular are called hydrates. They look sort of like little jellyfish in one of their states and like webbed cobbing in other states when they build up. But they're very harmful to dwarf seahorses and deadly to dwarf seahorse babies. So I just don't want to risk it. Another reason I don't have macroalgae is because it just makes the tank harder to clean. I vacuum my dwarf seahorse aquarium just about every evening and it's a lot easier to get all of the waste cleaned up from the bottom if there aren't things in the way. With plastic or artificial plants and hitching posts, I can just move them out of the way if I need to. Another thing that I've noticed about using macroalgae in a seahorse aquarium, not just dwarf seahorses, is that it can build up detritus and waste and it's really hard to clean off. Plastic plants, artificial hitching posts, I can take them right out and just clean them up. Another reason that I don't use macroalgae is it's one more thing to care for. You have to have a certain level of light for them to be successful, and you have to prune them because they will grow and overtake a tank depending on what species you get. I just don't want one more layer of um, responsibility as far as taking care of the dwarf seahorses. The dwarf seahorses are plenty of work by themselves. Another thing is I don't want to risk the growth rate because they do have cycles, macroalgae does have cycles where they can uh, release parts of themselves or their innards and become deadly and quickly overtake a tank and making the water poisonous. I just don't want to risk that. Also, there are times where certain macroalgae can reverse its breathing process more or less. So during the day, it might release more oxygen and take in carbon dioxide, whereas that may reverse in the darkness and you could risk suffocating your animals. Um, in that case, if you have a lot of macroalgae. And in a small aquarium like you would use for a dwarf seahorse, it would be really easy to overstock the macroalgae in a way that it could cause harm to the animals. Another reason that I don't use mac macroalgae is to the very point, yes, it probably is more like the natural habitat, but by the same token, I have the dwarf seahorses because I enjoy looking at them. And if I put in lots of macroalgae for natural spaces for them to hide, those seahorses are a lot harder to find and see and in my opinion to enjoy. That's one of the things I enjoy about my seahorses is being able to watch them. I know some people, they like to have macroalgae because they say it's a place for copepods to habitat and grow. Probably that's true to a great degree, but maybe not as much pe as people might think because seahorses are such good hunters and by nature, they're used to easily plucking off copepods from uh, live plants and sand beds. I prefer to just grow algae on the back of my aquarium and that gets thick enough where copepods burrow in there and they are reproducing and at the same time it kind of works like macroalgae in that it keeps the tank stable um, absorbing excess of nitrates to a degree which gets me to another point some people like to use 
macroalgae in an aquarium because they think it's going to keep their nitrates under control. It may help, but boy, I think you would have to use an awful lot of macroalgae for it to completely absorb all of your nitrates. Honestly, I don't know anything that's better than doing water changes to reduce your nitrate levels, keeping um, minimum feeding and um, keeping a low density of population are probably the best ways to keep your nitrates down. I, I would not ever just rely on plants to keep my nitrates down in a dwarf seahorse tank. So those are all of the reasons I do not keep macroalgae. Of course, your mileage may vary. You may find that you don't have any problems with macroalgae or you have just enough and it works perfectly for you. So my way is definitely not the only way to do things. I'm just sharing what works for me. And I've been pretty successful over these this past year working my, with my dwarf seahorses where I have had so many of them I've gotten into the 120s at least with my population and have had to rehome and um, put up basically my seahorses for adoption because they're doing so well and even though I have rehomed about 50 or 60 of them I still have several left and it looks like they're already getting ready to start their breeding season because there are lots of pregnant papas coming up and lots of flirting going on. Anyway, just something to think about. Maybe you'll find something about this video useful. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Take care.